Uh, thank you very much. It's great to see so many old faces here, uh, just after that intro there. Um, and any new faces, if anybody doesn't know me, my name's Theo de Rat, and I'm selling, here, to tell you that, uh, here to tell you that Pledge was all a big joke. Okay. Um, anybody been to my talks before? Yes. Good, 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 good. Well, this is the first one. There are only two to th th this time around, but they're, they're, they're not very easy. So, anybody get any ideas? No? First, first one. Sorry? No, no, close, but he's, um, imagine that's, uh, that I'm him and I'm calling you all a bunch of losers. All right. You're a bunch of losers. Right. I'd be um, disrespecting you, right? And in street talk, I'd be dissing you. So we'll go with this, shall we? What's the second one there? Spell, well done. And last one, baseball, swing and a miss. Thank you, Scott. So, dispel myths. We're dispelling the myths about NetBSD 8. <laughs> so, this talk is going to have a number of statements up here with a little bit of clip art that's got a question mark on it, and you have to guess whether it's true or false. Okay? It's a bit, bit more interactive than the usual talks. Um, so, long time to release NetBSD 8, true or false? False? True. Oh, we've got some trues. Yeah, <laughs> excellent, right? You need to keep shouting them out, folks, right? Um, well, I've just realized that uh, presenter notes aren't coming up here, so we're going to have to go and see. Um, 7.0 released in September 2015, and so we're talking about roughly two years between 7 and 8. That's longer than we like to have. Ideally, it would be a year, but it looks like we're going to ramp up that and, and aim for a year going forward as well. So we expect 9 to be around about this time next year. That's the plan, anyway. Um, we've, we started the process in June 6th. Um, it's still there on the branch, it's in beta at the moment, um, and we expect it to be uh, released real soon now. Um, still a few bugs to, to go, and um, they're posted there for, for people who want to have a look at them. Um, yeah, please go. Okay, next one. No, no packages available, true or false? False, thank you. Right, and I'm going to get you with this one. I feel sure. Any guesses? Good guess, <laughs> but no. And uh, there's nothing Trump related as well. I'll, I'll give you that one. So, yeah. <laughs> Any guesses? Mm, maybe, maybe. <laughs> What's Obama doing? <laughs> laughing, yeah. So the first part is ha, as in ha, ha, ha. What, the second part is red, you've got that, yes. Ha, red, where? So we're going to be talking about hardware here. Right, next one. Old hardware only, NetBSD. False. Any trues? Any trues? No, 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 no. Nobody's going to stick the neck out. Okay. Old hardware only. Um, well, Jared McNeil up in um, Newfoundland has been quietly overachieving uh, for the last year and a bit, I think. On this. All of this is his work with um, the ARM ports in NetBSD. I don't know if any of you has uh, taken the time out to, to compile um, the, the EVB ARM port just recently. I, I did it just after an AMD64B 
build on a, on a slow VM, which took five hours. The EVB ARM port took 11 hours, and that's mainly because of all the kernels that we have there. Um, we are killing some. Yeah, we're, we're killing this in, in uh, huge detail. So we talked about old hardware. Um, the, the kind of cortex names down the side, you probably don't realize, uh, you don't know. But the ones uh, across here are fairly obvious, very well known, I think, in, in the outside world. So we're not just there on, um, on old hardware. We're there on new hardware, especially in the ARM space. Um, now, Jared explained all of this over about an hour to me, um, and if anybody wants to uh, go and uh, have a look at the TypeScript in which he did this, it's very, very instructional, I can tell you that. It's in the form of a script file, so you just play it back with script minus p, that, and that should work on all the scripts that are out there in the BSDs. Um, but it gives a, a great idea of, of what he did, why, how he did it, and not just the, the hardware stuff as well, um, all the full device trees and um, other things like that that are coming on. So in, Intel um, QAT support came in from two of the IIJ developers. Um, I'm not sure if it's in tree at the moment or not, but it is there. And the ultimate support for new hardware there. <laughs> And uh, there's actually a screenshot of this. I don't know if you can see down here, but there's, um, uh, th that's the frame buffer. And where is it on there? Uh, maybe it's the next one. Uh, yeah, I think that's it there. USB there at um, ALHCI. Brilliant. Uh, Felix Dortmund in, uh, in Germany did, th did that. Um, and that's marvelous. Um, so. Any guesses? True, false. Partial. Partial? What way partial? <laughs> yeah, I mean, compared to GCC, we don't have all the architectures that they have, for example. Uh, but there is support for other newer architectures there as well. Um, so, yeah, OK. I'll, I'll give you the partial there, Christos. Yeah. OK. Um, it's in tree. Jorg has been maintaining it. Um, it's still optional and it's off by default. Um, Jörg pointed out that the regular testing with the bulk builds um, is particularly good at finding compiler regressions. And the other thing I'd note is that on the, build, uh, the bulk build stats that we see on the mailing lists, um, the Clang bulk builds uh, typically have way more packages building, not way more, they have more packages building than GCC uh, builds. Um, whether that's because Jorg is more efficient at doing these things or whether uh, Manuel doesn't, um, doesn't do them as often, I'm not too sure, but uh, there we go. Uh, if you were in the, the, the talk before this one, Camille was talking about LLDB uh, and the debu debugging infrastructure. One of the particular points that, that Cherry made there was about the, um, uh, the libfuzzer and um, is it the safe shield um, that was there, yeah. And the, um, the sanitizers as well are uh, very interesting for us. And Camel's been doing some great work uh, there with that. OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> True, false, maybe. Partial. Partial, partial. partial because <laughs> we have no top of the kernel <laughs> virtualization, yeah. OK. Um, We've got Zen, of course, had that for, well, over 12 years now. Um, user mode, we have there. It doesn't work, actually, if you compile it just recently. Um, something in the, the changes that um, uh, Ubiashi san did for the, the LD scripts um, have made it not, not to compile. Um, we've got ROMP, which is the kind of ultimate virtualization um, by namespace munging, I think is the best term of it. Um, but we have no Beehive or KVM equivalent, or even the, the BSD, uh, the OpenBSD BMM. Uh, that's probably a big hole that we have. Um, be great if somebody would, would have a, a look at it. Okay, no signing. I can make a few signs. Nope. 
<laughs> yeah, I think uh, 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 Maria Strauss is trying to give me the American Sign Language for something there, but I'm not sure which it, which it is. Any guesses? Partial. We're talking about NetBSD here, so I, I, I'd probably go for a no, we don't have it. But we do, um, we do sign the hashes of all the releases that we do. Um, which is a minor thing, it's, it's, it's not that great, and you'd have to generate the, the hashes yourself to, to work out whether it's, it's good or not. Um, but uh, having said that, all of the Metalog hashes that are created during build.shell, they get installed on the, um, the machines, and so it could be done automatically. Um, we do need to pick up a game here, though. Right, outdated utilities in base. And Christos isn't allowed to answer this one. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, false, what? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> uh, actually, I've got a script that will help you out there, Martin. Yeah. Um, but color LS is in package source, and I have a, a script that will do it because I, I need colors. I, I need all the context I can get with my eyes. Um, anyway, um, I'll say a no. Christos is doing a marvelous job there, updating all of the, um, uh, the third-party stuff that we have in base. There is now a, a small shell script uh, called sysinfo, which will do a, kind of fi a fairly fine-grained um, job of working out what, uh, what specific versions of packages, well, packages, what specific versions of system information we have in the base system. Um, and uh, as of last week, I committed some stuff to do it on a, a dester as well. So we can actually work out um, from the dester in build.shell uh, what packages, uh, I keep saying packages, it's the, the, the wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's the next step. Yep, yeah, uh, well, small steps, lots of them. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's coming. Um, sorry? Okay. Uh, just repeat the question. Uh, Christos said he wanted it to be um, extended so that the latest version could be printed relative to, to this. This is actually a snapshot of, of what's installed on the system and things like that. It would be nice to have that up on the website um, and so people can actually run it locally and check it against the, uh, of what's there. That was going to be the next stage of this um, whole thing. Um, okay, I'll let you off without answering the previous one. <laughs> Partial? I would say probably right. We don't have any of the new modern congestion al uh, control algorithms or mitigation algorithms uh, in, um, in our TCP. Um, one of the bright spots was um, Manuel Bayer's uh, SOC CAN implementation for, for all of us who have cars and want to run NetBSD in our cars. Right. <laughs> and boats. Sorry, yes, yes. Uh, sorry, my, my mind was on other things there. <laughs> um, yeah, and the only other thing I could, I could think of was that um, Roy has done some marvelous stuff with DHCP CD. Um, and. Um, I, I used to think that, oh, stuff, I'll just use DH client, it works fine. But if you actually have a look at the size of the executables, the DH client one is about, what, 5 meg? And um, DHCP CD comes in about 60K or so. So, great work. And I know Christos has been working closely with them on, uh, on getting some bugs fixed, and Roy's very responsive, and it's great to have that. Um, but I'd, I'd agree in general, networking is outdated. Um, so, is it difficult to develop for? False. False, thank you. Yes. We have build.shell, it's been around uh, 15 years. Um, does cross OS building and cross platform building. Um, that's incredibly useful uh, and a great selling point as well for NetBSD. Uh, we've got the make image there, which will build up an image um, for anybody who wants to run things. Um, and especially as, uh, nice is you can actually add packages into that and get um, 
a straight image built for you like that. It's now um, runs unprivileged, and um, we've got other things in, in package source that will make um, live CDs and may, uh, make a USB stick that you can boot from. And just recently, uh, Jared's done some marvelous work with all the U-boot packages in Savannah as well, wherever you are. Yes, there. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to wake you up. You know. <laughs> and uh, mentioned all the U-boot packages. That's, that's um, the ones I could find down there that would fit on a, uh, on a thing. Apologies, you probably can't see them very well. But um, yeah, uh, that's because there are a, a fair number of them these days. Okay, run by morons. <laughs> well, I have to say, in my case, it's absolutely true, if, if I have anything to do with it. Um, others take a large amount of time and effort to run the, the, um, the project and to do a whole lot of the administration, of the um, Petra up the back, for example. Um, we have a board of directors. Um, and a core team, which is the technical management. So it's just like the, um, a company set up, really. We have AGMs every year uh, and board elections every year as well. So this is your chance to become a moron, right? <laughs> How about this one? True? True? False? Well, I'd have to say false, actually. We have no hammer. Um, one of the reasons for that is that it involves um, VFS changes. Um, our ZFS is out of date, but um, Chuck's in the, in the uh, process of updating it. Uh, looking forward to that. LFS was worked on during the Google Summer of Code. Um, and PUFFs and PUD allow uh, Fuse file systems reliably. So for all of the people who said that we, we don't have modern file systems, what ones were you thinking of? <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give, you, give you that, right. Um, so ZFS, what, what are the other ones that people are looking at? EXT4? NFS4, that's true, yeah, I'll give you that. Um, what's, what's the state of the art in Linux at the moment? Have they given up on uh, B3FS? XFS is years old and doesn't work reliably, I believe. Right, the, the comment from the, the audience of the live stream was that Red have, have pulled the plug on BTRFS. So, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> right, okay, so th th there's still some discussion about this, but we're not, we're not doing that badly. Um, we have um, the file system switch that all of our... Um, backups are done using um, on uh, TNF machines. Um, so we're, we're not doing that badly, I, I don't think. We've got Samba FS and the, the client one there. True, true. No multipathing, but yeah. OK. So maybe there is room for improvement. Maybe I was over op uh, optimistic or something like that. Um, I thought you'd added a new um, AES. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well. Um, it's probably fairly constant in the machines I run it on. But <laughs> anyway, no D-trace. Partial? Again, because it's old? <laughs> Sorry? Uh, true, yes, yes. And we certainly don't have some of the, the mods that, that George was talking about earlier on this afternoon. Stability. Sorry? Stability. Stability. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you, give you all of that. However, Savan has done the, um, the necessary and added in the, um, the D-Trace Toolkit scripts. So it's not, it's not forgotten about, and uh, we'll certainly um, track the open D-Trace uh, stuff when it, when it makes it into... Um, well, out of GitHub, I think. Um, but there. Um, I see somebody here was um, doing stuff in 2015. Um, 
Yeah. No NVMe support. False. Thank you. Yes. We brought it in uh, Nonakasan and um, uh, Jeremy Dolacek brought it in from OpenBSD. Um, and it seems to be working fine, certainly um, it, with, with his tests. Okay. False? Okay, we've got a false and a partial and... No, it's still out there for review, and he's still making changes. I saw some at the end of last week. But um, there, there, there's definitely um, hope in sight for this kind of thing. Okay, developers out of touch. That's not for us today. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, obviously true, right? Whenever I travel, I don't take keys with me. I have loaner equipment and things like that. Uh, means that nobody can email me. It's great. It really is. If you want to relax for a while, then do that. Um, so for my part, I'm out of touch when I'm here, uh, when I travel. Um, yep. So did everybody bring their private keys and two-factor tokens? <laughs> no? No? Okay. So I'm going to claim, uh, claim victory on that one, I think. Okay. Next one. You're very quiet out there. Come on. With a ring of two. I'd I'd say that we we do have them. Um, Jorg has been beavering away on this for is it five six years? You told me this morning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, he's been doing um, conversions from CVS through Fossil and onto Git for um, five years or so. Uh, there was there have been various speed ups along the way and things like that, but we certainly have uh, git mirrors of the CVS tree. The CVS tree is obviously the master one, and that um, we've also got the Bitbucket um, Mercurial tree there, which is fairly new, last month or so, um, and that's great for all of us who like Mercurial. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks to Jorg for setting that up, and. Um, IIJ's um, got a repository that they do um, automatic conversions on using a fairly uh, interesting JavaScript script. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's fun. Um, okay. <coughs> Testing is... Sorry? Um, I think looking at the project as a whole, how would you see NetBSD's testing in the whole scheme of things? Compared to other projects? Hmm. False. Yeah. I'd, I'd, be much better, but it's I think the, the combination of Rump and Anita and things like that <laughs> give us a marvelous platform, really, for doing all of the, the continuous testing, for working out whether... Um, Networking is, is, um, has been caused to, to take more time due to one change. And there's usually a list of, of um, commits that have happened since between the two test times. Um, I think that's great. Uh, so that's the RelEng um, list that I think it was Christos was talking about this morning. Um, the, the platforms where the, the testing is done and the, uh, the, the frequency of those tests. So I think our testing is pretty, pretty damn good, actually. It, you're right, it could be better. We could test more stuff. And I think that's the idea going forward as well, in that um, we have a rule that any, any new um, utility that comes on board, we need tests for it. It needs to be ATF tests. Um, now, that's, that's fairly onerous and things like that, but we can always help you out. Uh, with making tests into ATF tests. Some of us have done it a number of times and forgotten how to do it and then have to go back again. And so we've you know, documented some of the moves uh, uh, along the way. Um, I've also got some scripts to, to help us out doing this as well. Um, as well as that, the, um, these are the, the, the runs from September 2017, August 2017, 
and we can see that the times and the dates where things started failing and the tests that are failing, that kind of thing. I, I think that's um, a great resource to have, um, certainly in the run-up to, um, to a release, if you want to find out, if, you, if any people can remember back to um, the five and the six days, we were taking six, seven months to try to find out where something had gone wrong over the last two years. Um, this is a great way of helping us out, uh, so we don't do that all again. And uh, if you're in Christos's talk yesterday, you'll know all about reproducible builds. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I'll send you a, a redirect to, to the talk that he gave and the, the paper as well. Um, one thing I have to say, it was way more complicated than I expected. Um, the number of things that had to be changed were were marvelous, uh, not marvelous, uh, were extensive, let's put it that way. Um, I talked to Christos about it, he said um, we were the first BSD to complete the Debian run, so, and he thought that we were the first big Unix to uh, complete the Debian run as well. Does that include all the Linuxes? Yep, okay. Oh. Okay, interesting. So, uh, rather, rather a significant piece of work there. Um, and just a reminder that Minix uses the NetBSD user land and the build, uh, build scheme as well. So they've, they've got this almost for free that I imagine they'll have to do some, some changes, but um, they're, they're doing fairly well with that. Thank you. Right, we have now FDT in, uh, in tree. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware of that, it's the, the full device tree, which means that we don't have to specify everything in kernel config files, for example, for EVB ARM boards um, and things like that. It's, um, it's a marvelous way of, of reducing the number of kernels and hopefully taking that build that I had from 11 hours down to uh, a much more manageable five or six, something like that. Um, so everything else that goes into, um, into NetBSD 8, the ptrace fixes from Camille that he was talking about uh, at the end of his talk there. Um, there's a new sound driver. It went in. We had some, some issues, but now everybody seems to be um, reporting that, that we've got good sound, I think, uh, across the board. So uh, that's good. Um, Cytosan's uh, fixes for the, the faster Intel uh, NICs. Um, and we mentioned the, the new AES uh, mode. Obviously not constant time, but I'm sure that's going to come next week or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things that Jared talked about in that script that I, I pasted up there earlier uh, was a new SDMMC driver, um, which is, allows us to, to run much faster on the, the, the SD cards than we were otherwise uh, able to. Uh, Maxim Viard's... Um, it has done a PMAP overhaul of AMD 64 and i386. Um, marvelous stuff as well. Um, uh, and um, Zen kernel module, that's the uh, American spelling of it. <laughs> right. And um, there have been some, some changes to SCSI control. Yeah. Lua is now at 534 in kernel, um, which is great. If you missed, uh, I think it was BSD CAN, there's um, a marvelous talk there about a Lua-based uh, security model. All right? uh, yes, these aren't Eximerins or anything like that. Um, that. That was created by a guy, um, not related to the project at all. Um, very interesting talk, and uh, it allows us to, to sandbox various um, applications and utilities. Um, just through a, a different security model. Um, so ext4fs uh, has been uh, beefed up a bit. Um, it's still called ext2fs in the file system, but yeah, there are other bits in there. But that's the American spelling of his name, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, the, the turbo channel USB stuff we, we saw earlier on. Um, uh, all marvelous things. Right? Um, the net MPCF network changes are, are in tree. They're not switched on. 
uh, but they are coming. So uh, we're, we're getting there. Um, and Nick merged his, um, his USB uh, work that he's been doing, I think, over the last two years or something like that. Uh, again, that gives us some USB 3 support, so we're a lot better than we were previously. Um, this helps us work on yeah, newer hardware and things like that. GPD support, including booting. That comes from John Nemeth, I think. And um, the, the other uh, marvelous forward-looking uh, hardware uh, kind of thing that we have is PCI support for the, um, for the Sharks. Anybody still running Sharks, by the way? Well, excellent, too. Um, I, I threw mine out a couple of years ago, I have to say. But, uh, well, that was the last one I had. Um, but yes, well, well done the pioneers here. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, we brought in IB, IP6 adder control from FreeBSD. Um, Christos's black list is new in NetBSD 8 as well, I think. Um, yeah, 7, yeah, yeah, whatever. And uh, Maxim Viard wrote a, a scanner and has been running our source tree through looking for various leaks. Uh, lock contentions and other things like that. So there's a lot of um, security work that's been going on, going on like that. He also split the uh, kernel PMAP, and this is where I get into the, the section where I know nothing about it, and so my mouth is moving and words are coming out, but they don't mean anything. Right? Um, but he's been doing some security work to um, uh, to separate the... the um, user in the kernel um, mappings, I think, that, that are there. I shall probably shut up about that now. It's probably best if I do that. Um, VIU SCSI, which helps us much uh, uh, with a lot of the, um, the virtualization pat, um, platforms. Benny helped, um, brought, a, brought us up on uh, the compute engine. Um, so that's supported in eight, I believe, and all bugs fixed and things like that. Uh, um, and Riostrad has done some, some work on Nuvo, I think. It, no? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's there now. It wasn't before, and we're good. Right. Um, so, apart from having lots of slides here, it looks like I'm going to uh, finish early. Um, so, I'll just say... There's lots new in NetBSD D8. I've kind of um, clipped the surface of it here, I think. Uh, lots of people are working very, very hard. Um, it'll be available real, real soon now uh, for some version of real soon now. And um, with that, any questions and answers? Volunteers. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you could uh, say something about the, uh, the development of this particular release in comparison to the other ones. Has it been um, more painful or? Um, development, you mean branching of it or do you mean the whole efforts leading up to the branch? Or the efforts, what? so like the features and stuff like that. So changes that cause uh, problems and um, how volatile has the branch been? Uh, from a personal point of view, I haven't found it very volatile. Um, as in, when I want to build it, it's, it's there. Previously, I mean, 10, 20 years ago, I'd, I'd come along and say, you know, what state is current in? Can I install it or, or, or something like that? I haven't had to do that much. At all, just recently, um, it's it's been there, and um, so and I think that the automatic testing, the Anita stuff, um, and especially the automatic runs have have been largely to to um, largely to blame for that that lack of volatility or lack of instability. I think. Yeah. Uh, I'd say we had some pretty nasty issues with the GCC update. And yeah. we are not completely over that one yet, but... Uh, sure. Uh, and, w well, I think they were even worse in the past. I remember M68K um, managed to take a, a, an absolute dive sometime when, when we upgraded GCC, purely because GCC weren't interested in uh, 
in M68K um, code generation and things like that. And we had horrendous bugs like that. But the ones, and yeah, we're still seeing the, the, the fallout from that, I think. But I don't remember seeing any, any kind of really disastrous things happen in the last things. I remember 20 years ago, Mycroft managed to check something in and left the, the tree broken for two, two weeks. Um, yeah, and refused to change it either because, because it was Mycroft. Um, I think the, bo the big broken things were all uh, very subtle issues that didn't show up uh, until you were just doing the right thing under a full moon. Yeah, yeah, so. that's right. Uh, my question is about the tool chain. Um, so I had uh, a glimpse of some conversations about GCC deprecating some platforms recently. I'm not completely... Uh, sure, I understand all of it, but is that going to affect us? And what do we, you know, are we as portable as we used to to different compiler chain tool chains? Let me try to answer that. Um, we have not upgraded to a version yet where uh, serious uh, loss occurs for our architectures. Uh, we are upgrading uh, GCC in current right now to a version that is not affected by that change. So we have the most longest time for that old platforms. And we are actively trying to get those platforms supported by LLVM. And even in GCC, the plan is not finalized yet, uh, as far as I can tell. So. <laughs> Any more? Well, thank you very much for, for letting me be a stunt, Mark. Powell.